Hi, Carol here, and a great big warm welcome to my craft room. I know it has been a little while, but I will explain why I have been MIA lately, later on in the tutorial. Now, I wanted to make a card with this Altenew tea set. It's a stamp and die set, and I outlined the teacup in gold here. That's what I'm doing. I probably didn't put any powder down. <laughs> So that's why I'm struggling with getting all the little pieces parts off there. And in the background is that beautiful Stampin' Up! doily stamp. It's absolutely exquisite. I bought it when it first came out. It has to be at least five years old. And I love it. I keep it for those special occasions and this is one of them. So what I had in mind here, my friends, is to do a teacup and a teapot card but I didn't have a large enough uh, teapot to go with this teacup <laughs> so I ended up drawing one for myself and it's very simplistic I made it as simple as I could if you don't draw you are going to be able to draw this one look at me yes I'm getting out my powder punch don't ask me why it's got a little bit of that off color in it. Probably because I had something on something when I pounced it down and now it's on there. But baby powder works. Any type of powder resist when I uh, end up using embossing powder. Here I made a mask. I put a mask on, took it off, and there you have it. Mask whatever you want to be in the forefront and then put whatever you want in the background over top and this is what you end up with. But I didn't use this. <laughs> of course I didn't. I ended up using the cup and saucer separately and you will see why in just a minute. Now, I wanted to make this uh, teapot. You can see that I have one in front of me and I started out with wanting to do the exact replica of this. But I thought, you know what, that uh, 3D effect of having the lid come off, I thought was going to be a bit, uh, you know, a bit more than we needed. And all you're drawing here is like a little wee tree and then some little marks in it. I clean it up because it's not exactly in the center. So you want to have a nice white eraser there. And look at, this is how easy this is. Easy peasy, I'm telling you, it is not difficult. And if you slow this down, you will see, you know, the concept of it. And then I am going to um, put in there some beautiful roses. And I'm just going to hand draw them. Roses are not a difficult flower to hand draw. Uh, and you'll see that as well. And you can see every time I look up, I think, okay, get rid of it. That's, <laughs> that's not going to work. It's not even in the center, Carol. So here we go. We'll just... Uh, it's really funny because as I'm looking at this, I can really see the little things that I should have saw before, you know? Does that make sense to you? When you do it this way, it looks like the lid is on another top teapot behind it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I'm telling you. No artist here. Uh, just like to draw and I learn from my own drawing. Like that little lid should have been laying on top of that oval circle in the center. But you know what? I'm just darkening it up here so you can see it. And then we're going to draw some roses on here and uh, call it a teapot. Now the funny thing is, okay, let's zoom in. I've already obviously cut that out in the edit for some reason. But I am using the Altenew uh, paint set as well. It is, I don't see it right in front of me, but I think it's 36 paints in the set. And uh, you don't need that many. You're just going to mix it up so you have a light pink, more of a rose tone and a red. And um, I'm just going to quickly put the stems and the leaves by looking over at my teapot that I brought upstairs out of my hutch. 
Yes, so I dusted that off <laughs> and put it in front of me just to get the drift of the roses, you know. Now, I was concerned here because, you know, you're thinking that it's a bigger teapot and then I'm thinking, okay, I have to do the roses big. And, oh yes, my heart was in it, but the roses are a tad large. But I got used to it as I was uh, tracing it out. And this is actually a lot of fun. I know for stampers, uh, and I am a stamper as well, I love to use stamps. I just couldn't find a stamp that I had what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing kind of like a hexagon around it so that I can center the rose in when I make the petals. It'll all come into play as I'm doing it. And some of it I am looking at my teapot and some of it I'm just doing it um, freehand, you know, just thinking, okay, this is what a rose should look like. And it was a lot of fun. I have... Um, been contemplating this creation for at least a month to be a card. But, you know, I couldn't figure out with a teapot this large how I was going to do a card and keep the teacup and the saucer and a tea bag and the spoon and the lace doily all intact as, you know, a card. It would have been gargantuous. So, the card itself, I think, is seven by nine, like the, uh, the actual size of the creation that I did here. And I received an order from Heartfelt Creations that I had ordered some supplies, just a few. I wanted to try their, um, I think it's nine and a half by seven and a half, their pre um, album, you know, it's already prepared, the album. It has the five pages inside and uh, it's quite beautiful and I think it was $13.99 US funds which is probably about $99 Canadian when you switch it over. <laughs> yeah, my mind automatically switched my Canadian money to American money when I order because generally any place I order is in the States and yeah. So anywho, I ordered a few things. I'm going to show you in this tutorial the few items. And as I was trying, in between doctor's appointments, specialist appointments, um, I was, I don't know, I was trying to come up with something different. Now, I was going to have it as a shaker and have the acetate coming out of the spout and have it look like water and then go down into my teacup and then it would turn into tea with a bag in there. But I'm telling you, I could not get the concept. I was concentrating on it, I think, too much. And uh, here you go. I'm just do. you know, how long can you look at somebody drawing roses, right? So I tried to hurry it up. And a rose here, you can see the easiest way is to draw the middle, the tiny little bud in the middle, and then work it down into a cone, and then add your little um, petals off to the side and you can do them tight you know so that the roses are nice and tightly fit together or you can loosen them up and uh, yeah you'll see more of it as I go to uh, color it in and I'm really satisfied with it at the end so I had to make a big decision okay am I going to use this as a page in the album and the album is going to be a bridal album and um, I'm going to do each page as a tutorial because I think it would be fun as a page. You could make it as a card, you know, and I thought if I do the entire album, you know, that would be 10, 11, 12 pages altogether. So I'm thinking that the time on that tutorial would be at least 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine sitting down to a 12 hour album tutorial? So I'm working page by page, and then as the page is completed, I'm going to put it up on my channel, and you'll get to enjoy each page if you'd like to do it as a card, because it's 7 by 9 
you could get away with it. But i tell you why, another reason why I didn't do the card. Here I'm just adding um, the paints. They're so beautiful. Uh, the Alta New set. It, it's very, uh, there it is there. Oh, I'm trying to get it in. Let me see. A two, four, six, eight, ten. Carol, you got in my way. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, and eighteen on the other side. Yeah, thirty-six. So I'm just mixing up some greens as we're gabbing here. Now here's the key. Uh, if I did it as a card, where would the fold be? Because I couldn't fold it halfway in between this large teapot, and I couldn't fold it near the uh, saucer that the teacup was on. It was a dilemma, and I and I did want a card. I wasn't going to jump into an album right away, and then it hit me. You know what? I'm going to do a bridal album. And uh, if when I get finished and you're interested in it, let me know. I'm going to do this as the back page. So I couldn't, I was so excited when I got that settled feeling. Yes, this is going to be a page in the album. And um, it's going to have some flips and flops and flaps and all kinds of goodness. Tuck spots and all kinds of things behind this actual um, page. But for now, I'm sticking with just showing you what I did as far as creating the one page. And I thought for a wedding album, I think it's beautiful to have a, to end it with a cup of tea. As a Canadian, I am a tea drinker. I love my Tetley tea. And you know, I've always said it, I don't like flavored anything. I'm just, you know, Tetley tea, and I can do a red rose tea once in a while, but I do prefer Tetley. And yeah, so here we go. I am trying to get in tight, you know, a nice tight fit and adding water. And if I don't like the shade, I just add some more water, tap it off, and there you go. When I do leaves, I really do like to have the wetness on there so that I get a bloom. And I love to add a lot of water and let it just dry because the water's not going to go outside of the area you place the water in, if that makes sense, you know. It's not going to spill over onto a dry surface. So it's very nice to add quite a bit of water and then just tap a little bit of color, let it do, let it do its thing and then come back to it. You can tell that I love the real painterly feel. Then to do a precise flower like I did on the ones above this rose, this tightly squeezed rose where the petals haven't opened up like the pink one has. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's so nice to just do things freehand, just to draw some leaves. They're not that difficult. And roses, if you take a, a good look at what I've done here, are very simplistic as well because they're unfolding at different times and you just, you know, nothing has to be that detailed and precise with the rose. You just have to add a lot of lines. And, uh, you know, if it's a small rose, it's even uh, less difficult to uh, make. So here I'm going to take out as many little lines where I chose not to paint them in. And yeah, that's the beauty because they will erase and you just have to make sure your paint is dry. And doesn't that wet uh, painterly look really give itself to this teapot? I really like it. The roses are more precise, but the leaves are just a bit of water on them and then add your color and let it just pounce in there and then you can go back and do the details. Here I'm just adding some white gouache and um, I mixed it up because I wanted it to be really white because I'm going to tone it down with more of pinks on top of it and you'll see why I make this so white in just a little bit. And then underneath the spots that I want the leaves to be tucked over I'll just put a darker red hue. Depends what color, you know, I end up adding some yellow into the red, some burgundy, some blue. 
all kinds of colors, you know. So just experiment. If you're coloring, just experiment. Don't be afraid to um, try things, you know. How bad can it look? It can't look that bad. Trust me, I don't uh, worry about uh, detail as much if I'm painting. And here I took out my Prisma pencils and I am going to use the Derwent Ink Tense pencils as well. I chose to use a lot of mediums. I'm getting really tired of looking at my things sitting in my craft room and not using them. So I've decided I'm just going to add a little bit of this, a little bit of that to each uh, painted area, you know, each spot that I wanted to add color to. I will go from the ink tense pencil oh yeah some beautiful roses aren't they gorgeous and i'll move to the gamsol i'll grab a stump and i'll add the gamsol because nothing is sweeter than moving color around with gamsol if it's a prisma pencil so uh yeah i see how i move back and forth if i don't like it i just add more <clears throat> and you can add white paint it doesn't have to be gouache you can add white pencil. You can add just about anything you want. It's your roses, it's your picture, and have fun with it. The more you concentrate on getting it perfect, the more it's going to be imperfect because, you know, that's not what art is. That's not what coloring is. It's supposed to be relaxing. And trust you me, I've been having some very serious blood pressure issues and heart rate issues in the last two months and that's why you haven't seen me uh, have a video up on YouTube as of late because I have been going to a specialist and then I have my left foot issue you know where I broke my toes there and they didn't heal properly so now I have to have surgery on my left foot and that it's been so hard to walk on so I've been seeing um, orthopedic surgeon I think it's orthopedics for your feet um, yeah I'm sorry if I say um that's not like me I, I don't like that but I'm trying to think I'm trying to look at what I'm doing here and tell you all my woes <laughs> you know I don't tell you very much on my YouTube channel I just like to keep it light keep it happy and but when I'm not here and I'm not putting videos out I like to tell you why, and that is it. And the worst, you know, when you have high blood pressure, you risk um, my migraines being more severe. And the heat here in the Niagara area, sorry about that, you know that happens on all my tutorials, but the humidity being close to Niagara Falls in proximity has been over the 100, I mean over 100 degrees for an entire two weeks. And that's hard on your brains if you have migraines to be going in and out of uh, the hot hum humidic air. So I've been, you know, trying to regulate that. And now every two weeks I've been going to deal with my heart issue. And uh, yeah. And having mitral valve, you know, adds to things um, that I don't. Uh, well, that I'm concerned with, especially with high blood pressure. So, of course, my artwork doesn't give me high blood pressure. I enjoy it. It's very relaxing. But I do want all of you, my friends, that join me in my craft room, I don't think of you as subscribers. I think of you as my friends. And I thank all the new friends that have joined my channel and probably wondering where I am. <laughs> this woman has a channel, but I never see her work. Well... I have this album. I think you're going to love it. I have everything out that I'm going to use. I've been die cutting. I have been taking out my laces, taking out my stamps, die cuts, and preparing it all so that I can dive right in. And this was my main concern because this teapot, teacup from the teacup from Altenew, that's the Altenew set, I got that oh, months ago and haven't even opened it and I did want to do a teacup project and I see a lot of them on Pinterest or YouTube 
and you know they're the stacking the cups up but I didn't want to do that I wanted to take it a different route than doing that and that's gorgeous boy there's some t oh, so many talented people on YouTube but I wanted to add my touch to this Alta new set with the teacup and add my own teapot which I needed to because I didn't have a teapot this big it, as a stamp you know nothing worse than to have a teapot and it's smaller than your teacup <laughs> couldn't deal with that so here I'm showing you in the rows let's go back to the picture uh, I am showing you how I add the white pencil you know it doesn't have to be white gouache it doesn't have to be a white acrylic paint it can be your watercolor white paint all it is is to take the sunlight just to look like a little bit of sunlight's coming down on your rose and I try to keep it uniform but if it isn't so what I don't care it's like it's my uh, rendition of a teapot and the roses you know and then I thought when you're working with a wax pencil like Prisma you can take it off with your knife it will just peel right off and take you down to that beautiful color here I'm putting um, my dark details in with a deep gray pencil this is my dark shading so you know how I do that I just play around I grab this I grab that and when I'm satisfied with it I stop that's you know if it takes me 52 layers to get satisfaction out of what I'm doing here you can see I'm dragging that Prisma pencil wax off of the rose I already have a deep set white down in there I've already filled in so it's going to look more painterly it's going to look not so precise detailed you know it's just going to look pretty that's all i was going for if it looked like a rose and it didn't look like a daffodil or a lilac i was happy if my rose didn't look like that i was happy as long as it looked like a flower i was good and i worked on this you will see i worked on it for a long while in between having to rest and having to alter uh, medications for my blood pressure and issues like that they can't be helped and you can't I have to just set things aside until I get everything situated and now I think we do have I monitor we have things in order I monitor my blood pressure and my heart rate every morning and I see the specialist every two weeks. So uh, we're getting there. Now here, this is some gouache. I'm going back. Isn't this funny? See how I go back again? And I'm only putting it on the places, some of the places where I took it off with the cutting knife, you know? And that's the fun of it. And you, all of a sudden, when you do this, if you're looking at a picture of a rose and you're drawing it on, this simplistic teapot I just did a chubby teapot but it's so funny that the lid is on the outside of the teapot <laughs> I hope I straighten that up later I don't even know as I'm looking at it, it just looks like a mushroom growing out of the side of my teapot <laughs> for now and uh, yeah I can't tell it's uh, been a few days since I did the edit and I just thought this would give me an opportunity to chat with you. I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your comments and getting to know uh, everybody that, you know, a lot of people that have newly subscribed. And to my other friends that have been with me for quite a while. I think I've been doing this for over five years now on YouTube. And I'm just delighted to have my channel and to uh, inspire if it inspires you to create a card and just doing one rose here I'm just doing that folded rose that hasn't opened up it's just kind of like a little bud and it's so cute and then you can go back if you like details you can go back with your Prisma pencils or your Inktense pencils your Crayola pencils whatever you have and you can draw the detail over top of your watercolor that's kind of sweet as well so I'm going to shorten up, believe it or not, the coloring of the actual roses. Just going to really scoot along 
and get them done. Now, you can tell that I go from using different water brushes, I change to a paintbrush, then I will go to, uh, you know, a fuller uh, paint, you know, brush or water brush here. I like to dip the water over in my water bin, you know, that thingy that I have that lets the water out and then it automatically comes up in the well so you always have fresh water. I don't squeeze out from the pan very often because you don't know the control level is there and I have leaves going across some roses, you know, next to the roses. So I like to really have control over what water I do use. So I dip it. You can see me going over there. Now ask me why I put the water to my left when I'm a right-handed person. Uh, I can actually, you've seen me do craft workout with my left hand because I can use either or. But uh, as a rule, I try to stick to my right hand because it's easier on the camera mm -hmm. set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yada yada. So I am now going to clean up the lid portion. I just think it's so funny that I did not rest the lid pick-me-up thing more towards the center. That's just odd to me. I don't know what I did. I hope I take the line out of there. I'm not too sure. But we will continue to paint and gab. So I hope everybody's been doing well. I certainly appreciate your comments and your emails. Uh, those of you that entrust me to pray for you on, you know, I have your names in my prayer journal and I pray for you every day and I hope you're doing well. You know who you are. I don't have to mention you by name. And here I'm trying to get some uh, reds and pinks, deep reds and some dark burgundy roses in here. But I do want to leave some space to color the actual um, teapot. And that was an issue for me. Here I'm using navy. Uh, you know when I shade, I, I pretty well use navy, deep gray, and um, an ultramarine blue pencil towards that color to get my shading in there. And you'll see me do this. Sometimes I'll just run a shade like, oh, there's my Intense pencils. You know it's my Intense because they're blue and they're in a blue glass bowl. I love going to the thrift stores. I used to. I don't anymore. I have stopped the thrift store scene because you can only have so much and I really, the only thing I do like to get to put all of my pencils on display are glass bottles. Yes. So here we go. Going to draw some of the stems. Fill them in. You have to have some stems. They can't be just floating. And at the end, I'll go back and clean up my leaves to see if there's any more detail. But you know, I prefer if I had have left them with that watery look of just putting some water down, dipping in the color, letting it spread on its own, and letting it dry. So now I'm going to draw a vine going across the lid of the teapot. I can't even look at that uh, thing the topper on my lid <laughs> because it's not in the center. Oh, something like that. Yeah, it'd drive you hairy, but you have to just let it go. If you didn't do it, forget it. You don't want to have high blood pressure over a topper of a teapot. No, you don't. So here I am just, yeah, I'll take my watercolor paintbrush or whatever I'm using and I'll put it right to the ink tents pencil. That's the better way of using ink tents. Let me let me jump in right there. Ink tents pencils, when you put it down, you have to be careful because you, as you'll see here, this is the ink tents and I can see that no 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 no. I am going to jump to using watercolors to make my grays so that my pot, my teapot looks uh, white. And, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. How I do it. I'm not going to show you how to do it because I'm no expert. I just, you know, I always say it on my channel. I am somebody, oh please don't, don't judge me by seeing that Coca-Cola. I have gone down to, I used to drink at least five or six a day and now I've gone down to about three a week. Yes, I'm trying to get off it completely, but you do have to wean yourself from Coca-Cola. It's like coffee. I don't drink coffee. And I like uh, the odd tea. 
here and there, you know, maybe three or four a week. But I am cutting up my Coca-Cola slowly, very slowly. <laughs> yeah. And yes, I am having one today, but what I do is I pour it into a, a glass mug that I have in the freezer. I put a few ice cubes and then pour it from the, I don't drink it from the can anymore. I pour a little bit in and then that'll last me, you know, I try to get the whole can to last me for a day. That's pretty good for me. So here's that Stampin' Up! stamp, rubber stamp. Talk about detail. Now, I didn't know whether I'm still on the verge of not knowing if it's going to go in a wedding album or a card. So I colored one on white cardstock and made it gold. I didn't know what I was going to do yet, so I thought I'll experiment. Then I did uh, Versamark and I put it on black cardstock. You make sure you do that powder, use your powder. You don't want to get any strays when you're dealing with this doily, that's for sure. And look at that. Oh yeah, this is art in itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If you want, to, yeah, if you don't have time to really do some artwork, just play with some powder on a black piece of cardstock. You'll be fine. It'll get out of your system and you'll be able to go on with your day. So here I'm using, I think it's the LDRS Creative uh, Ink um, inkless stamper thingy like Versamark. I love the LDRS Creative one. It's nice and juicy. Then I'm going to put that down somewhere because on here I was actually going to do the card on one of these pieces of cardstock. That's why the doily's off to the side on this one. I, It's so funny. I just could not, you know, get a handle on it. Now you could leave it just with the Versamark and clear embossing powder and it would be beautiful to add to a card, don't you think? Here is the clear. I hope it's the clear and not the white. I remember, you know how many mistakes I, I make so many blooper boo-boos when I create that I have to be very careful when I'm editing. <laughs> that it's the good stuff that I put in, right? So here we go, then I'm going to um, uh, heat set this. It's so pretty to me. This uh, this was one of the first stamps I bought when I joined Stampin' Up! five years ago. Over five years ago, I think. And I think I stayed with Stampin' Up! for just under a year until I realized there's other uh, things you can buy outside of that company. And uh, yeah, so I that's where my journey began though with Stampin' Up! and this beautiful doily die. I save it for wonderful occasions because it's so detailed. It's so lace looking. You, you almost can't tell it's a stamp, truly. It's not a die, it's a stamp. It doesn't come with the die. You have to fussy cut it. But fussy cutting this isn't that bad. You just have to make sure you get those little points that are sticking out on the edges. There's the die. Er, Oh, I'm so sorry. There's the stamp. Yes. And you can see I did one in gold. I did one in white. And now I'm checking to see, okay, let's get a plan here, Carol. Let's get a plan. I need to make my teapot look white. You can't just leave it like that. So you, of course you're going to go with the blues and the gray hues of the paint. And this is the best way I find to make, you know, Copics, it's too intense to use my Copics on this because I have to get in between all of these little areas and using paint is so much easier. It just is stress-free. So I'm mixing up some light, some medium, and some dark using uh, the values that I have over here. I like to have add the blues to my grays. I don't use black, very seldom. You can see my black isn't even touched up there, second down to the left. I like to mix my paints to look like a deep color, like a deep black, but only it'll be with the blue hues and colors and yeah. So I went over the top, that's the lid. I wanted the lid to look separate so I put a vine. And then you'll see why I was really crushing my stash to get 
uh, stamps and dies and supplies out of my stash to use. Uh, besides, you know, I did buy some heartfelt creation supplies, maybe about four things, and I'll share that with you in this tutorial. And then I am going to do a brush lettering calligraphy video, a few of them. So I ordered a few supplies for that, and I want to show you that as well. That, 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 right? <laughs> So let's get back to the painting. These are the, I think I stuck with the Alta New Paints because I do switch up. I do grab my uh, Prisma paints. Uh, they come in four different trays, four different trays, and they're beautiful paints. And I wanted to use them because they've been sitting there unused. And here I go to the outside to make a shadow. You'll see that. Um, and I don't... I really am not fussy on where the shadow is. This is not going into any museum. Just make some darker and some lighter. That will take the stress away from you for sure. So anything under anything, you know, to put it darker. Anything to the side that's out of reach, make it darker. Either side, it doesn't matter. Just kind of make it uniform and you'll be great. Seriously. I was very happy and always remember watercolors dry softer so um, yeah they don't look exactly like you're coloring with them now so the areas you want dark really make them dark even if they look like well this is supposed to be a white uh, uh, teapot well it will look white with the grays and blues and all the mixtures you make your dark medium and light grays with and and it'll just really, if you're doing your projects for fun, for relaxation, for creativity purposes, and not for, uh, you know, to make it stressful, it's not going to bother you where you put the darks, where you put the lights. Your eye will tell you whether it's right or wrong. It really will. And um, that's what I go by. That's how I judge things is just my eyes and make sure I have my glasses on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I can't do it without my glasses. I mean, I'd be totally off the page, but uh, here I go. I'm just, you know, marking it out and I go, whoa, I like that. Oh, I don't. So I take a cloth and I just tap the water off and it becomes lighter. And on the inside of the handle, obviously that's going to be darker because it's on the inside. Some of these things are so easily figured out if you do it that way and if you have a teapot sitting there uh, for shadow wise I don't do it because I have so many objects on my island good night the shadows are all over the place they're not you know I have stuff in the window ledges and doesn't let the light in properly and I can't go by that I just guess at it whatever looks nice I run with it and when you're making your grays, add some blues to your grays to make it darker. You know, go from light blue all the way to turquoise, dark blue. You do what looks good to you. Now here, I thought it would look nice to have things on the left-hand side. And you'll notice that as I'm coloring. I'll go back and I'll go back. And soon as I think, okay, that's enough. That's enough, Carol. Just stop. I stop. I just wish I had fixed that crazy thing on top of the lid, my hanger on tour thingy. Yes, the lid. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. So what did I do already? This morning I had to be in Niagara Falls to drop our truck off at the dealership and get a car for the day. They have some recalls that they had the Ford truck recall so I brought it in and they're going to do that for me and so I was out the door at uh, 7 30. Then I met up with my son and my grandson and had breakfast and now I'm home doing the voiceover. Here's the bottom portion of the teapot. Can that teapot get any easier truly? It really is an easy venture. And I know people that don't draw, it's not that easy. But give it a go. Just uh, go for it and try it. And you'll like it when you're done. I'm sure you will. 
And then in the groove of the spout, you're going to make it dark, right? Because the sunlight's not going to get in there. Now we're going to jump over to the saucer and the cup. I redid it. I didn't have it attached. I wanted it unattached. And I did the flowers and the leaves, the roses, tiny. That's what I'm doing here. Just tiny little drawings with your pencil. Not hard. You can just swirl it. Look what I'm doing here. It's just that little round circle. Then you put a cone on it. And then you wrap the leaves around the cone. You can't, I'm sorry, the petals around the cone. You can't get any simpler. Look at do 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 do. That's it. There's my rose. Do 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 do. There's another one. And just go for it. You can't fail with a rose. And then I'll take out a few roses. I did too many. You couldn't even see the cup. I use my mini little white eraser for that. And there you go. I'm just fixing it up, of course, of course. I had Hunter watch uh, this week, uh, uh, Mr. Ed. Do you remember that? A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Da, 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 da. I can't remember the words. Uh, Mr. Ed, the talking horse. <laughs> In black and white. Ah, uh, he laughed. It's pretty funny. I had to go back, you know. I haven't watched Leave It to Beaver and Andy of Mayberry and uh, all those old, nice, non-colored. Um, they're on YouTube now, but I have them in VHS, is it called? I did all the series when my boys were young so that they would have that to go back and watch because I just think Leave It to Beaver and all of those I sit and watch it still to this day and smile. I think it's wonderful to have something refreshing on that your grandchildren and children can watch. So let's move on here. So I went out for breakfast this morning, so that was nice. And the voiceover, I'm going to finish this today. And then I don't ha I'm going to move on to page two of my album my wedding album and complete that so I can get that up and we will do 10 pages if I can work in two pages at one time and it's not you know that intense it's not you know too many flips flops and all that I, I will do that for you I'll try to stay under two hours <laughs> for sure I tried to get under an hour with this one and I just couldn't I know some of you like to watch the drawing if I'm drawing things and I'm not using stamps. I couldn't find teensy weensy little roses like this and the teapot issue. So I thought, you know what, this would be nice. It'll refresh me on doing some drawing and let's see what else is going on. The um, calligraphy brush letter tutorial I think you're really going to like. I bought a ink mixer, wait till you see it, it's fabulous, from a site called, I'll leave the site, Ink Me This, and it is a brush lettering calligraphy site, and it's beautiful, and I'm going to do that in the future, coming up soon, everything is laid out, and I'm going to try and get that tutorial up. Now, I think I switched here to, nope, I'm still on the Altenew, okay, I haven't switched yet. We have to see. And I put the doily, there's my watering thing, that big round one where you press the button, the water goes down into that big well. And then it has like a water bottle thing that sits on top and it lets out water so that your well is always refreshed with nice water. Mm -hmm. Look at that stamp of that doily. I had to zone in on this. Is that not beautiful? And I fussy cut it. It is really funny, when I first started stamping and die cutting and creating in that, I didn't mind fussy cutting. But when more dies came out with the stamps, I got used to that way of just sticking the um, die on top and quickly die cutting. Here I'm just going to show you. I used, I wanted to show you all the C markers in your Copics. They, I pretty well tried to grab all of the C family. I think it starts with C00. I don't think it has a tr uh, three zero in it, but that's the ones that 
I know there's more than that. I grabbed some more. Yeah, keep going here. I just wanted to show you this family. And I played around with this. I just laid this out on the island and um, started seeing what I could match up. And that's why you'll see the saucer is a different cup, excuse me, a different color than the cup. I did the, one of them is with watercolors and one is with my Copics because I told you I wanted to switch up and use more of the materials I have in my stash. I don't want them sitting there and not getting any use. So I switched over to my Copics. Oh, on the saucer right here. And the C's, when you compare it to the watercolors, look like it has more of a blue tinge. And you will see that. And I'm going to tell you something else. Be very careful not to touch. Even though your paint is dry, your Copics will, you'll ruin your Copic nib. I was tried to be very careful. On a few of them I did touch it, but I'm not putting a heavy hand down. So that makes a difference too. I like be using the tip of the Copic marker and that will help you not to destroy your Copics. Just add a light touch. And I liked the fact that it bled into some of them so it looked more like I did it in a watercolor. That I stayed with the watercolors. So that didn't bother me. You know, I didn't ruin any of the tips. I wiped them immediately after I was using each one. I had a paper on the side there. And see, uh, it's a little bit more shaded to the blue. Then I said, oh, I need a little bit more right there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't bother me. I'll put Copic on top of watercolors. I'll put watercolors on top of Copic. Whatever works. So now I'm going to add some shading to the left side because it was the left side that of the teapot that I was putting shading on. Does it matter to me? No. One could be the right side, one could be the left. As long as it looks pretty, I'm okay with it. Pretty is my goal. I mean, you're dealing with a uh, pot of tea and a cup of tea. Wait till you see what I made the tea out of. Now I'm switching to the Prismas. See that? You get four. Four beautiful uh, tins, four pans here. And uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, I think. Ten colors and one, three, six, twelve. It's twelve colors. I can't even see it. Carol, slow down. Three, six, twelve. Yes. Okay, you get twelve pans per Prisma paint pan set. And I think it comes with four to the set. It's beautiful. And I don't get to use them enough. Well, you can see I do use them. They're dried. Uh, paint off to the side there and I have used them obviously since I bought them but not enough so I wanted to share with you how I mix them grabbing some baby blue grabbing some dark dark gray and mixing it everywhere so that I can move forward and this one yeah you have to be careful here how you set this down I wish I had have added water first but I really couldn't do that because it would have ran into the little roses. So I'm doing my best to do my best. Yes, whatever, you know, I didn't want to have to do. Oh, there I go, adding a ton of water. I'm using, obviously on this, I didn't share with you, 140 pound watercolor cold press paper. Here I'm grabbing some dark, dark, dark color. I didn't even see where I grabbed that from but I wanted to do the left side. You can tell I'm always working with the left side if you're watching uh, to see, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, this is not a tutorial for perfectionism, my friends. This is a tutorial for fun, to use your what you have in your stash and get some inspiration and do what, you know, do a teacup, teapot, saucer, um, I showed you a lot of things actually. When we move forward, the reason why it's almost two hours for a reason, I showed you two different ways to make your own little tea bag. And I didn't like the first way I did it. That's why you're getting two different ways. <laughs> if I hadn't liked the first way, you'd have only gotten one way to do it. Yes. I wasn't doing it because I wanted to use up time. Of course not. All my tutorials. Remember when I used to worry that I would be over a half an hour? I used to panic and now I worry if I'm over five hours yes <laughs> my things have changed 
and I did stamp them and use gold as my uh, gold embossing powder on the cup because it looks so cute. So here we go. I'm showing you the difference between the Copic is towards the blue and there you have it. So let's move that off to the side. Oh, there's my water well. I had all kinds of things going on here. So I took the tea out of the tea bag, but this is a round bag, mind you. And I thought, how am I going to make this look, sm you know, I cut it in half, but it was such an odd shape. I threw that in the garbage, don't worry. I know, some people would have just put it in their boiling water and made a cup of tea and let it drop to the bottom. I'd be spitting out tea flakes for a month if I did it that way. Oh, here's my stuff I got from um, Heartfelt Creations. I got this book, the Flip Album. It's gorgeous. I'll leave the measurements in that on my blog. And then I bought some, I couldn't wait to get the glue. That is the art glitter glue. I love it. So I got the refill in eight ounces and then the bottles two ounces. Then I got the nib. This is glossy accents, but they call it uh, 3D lacquer, but it comes out like glossy accents. And I remember to take that off or you're gonna spend a lot of try time trying to squeeze glue out of there if you don't take that lid out from underneath the well, the lid. So now all you do with these is screw them on the cap just really tightly. It won't come off. Now here's the thing. This is what I wanted to share. You need a stainless steel pin in your glue. Whatever pin you use, whatever you decorate it, make sure it's stainless steel or your glue is going to turn black. It happened, and I'm so glad I caught it because I would have ruined all that glue. You want stainless steel. And how do you know it's stainless steel? I'm glad you asked. All you do, well, you can add water to your pin overnight and see if it turns, um, you know, gross in the water. Or you can get a magnet, and if it sticks to the magnet, it's not stainless steel. If it doesn't stick, it's stainless steel. So uh, that's what I did. So if your pin sticks, I hope I got that right. Uh, it's not vice versa. I gotta think here. If it's stainless steel, it doesn't stick on the magnet. I'm pretty sure, but I'm gonna show you. So I'll find out once I show you. Here I'm fussy cutting my little teapot. And isn't it cute? It did end up cute. Then I take my cutting knife and I go in between the handle, of course. And then I can't wait to share. Wait till you see my cup of tea. It looks like real tea. I'm telling you, I am so excited. Now I am going to make sure that when I'm fussy cutting, I get all the teensy little spots off. And you're going to want to go over it with a light, light to medium Copic around the edges so you don't see the white watercolor cardstock. And this cardstock, I will list it all on my blog because I don't have it right in front of me which watercolor paper I used, but it is cold pressed and it is 140 pound. It's probably that B paper that I recently got from Michaels. I really like it. Uh, so I am going to leave a link for you. It's inexpensive. You can use your coupon. It was $19.99 and I'm Canadian, so I'm talking Canadian prices. And then you use your, I had a 45% coupon that day that I bought it. So I got 45% off of that. Yes, so here we go. I'm going to darken that up and you can see how it moves to the blues right there. Oh yes, I broke into this Fiskars turning knife. It actually, you have got to get used to this. I am telling you right now, there is a knack to it. So make sure, you know, it doesn't stay in place. That little round end turns with you as you do your cutting. So make sure to have that in mind when you're using it. I bought it, I don't know, six months ago. I haven't taken it out of the package yet. And I thought now is the time because, uh, I'm going to show you on this. Now watch. I'm pretty tight trying to cut this out. 
and I do rip it right on the left hand side and not from my cutting. I ripped it from pulling out the page. So make sure, or the cutting piece, make sure that you're careful there. Uh, I know I did cut it. I don't know if it shows there, but I did it somehow and but it didn't do anything to the fact of doing my, uh, yeah. And what I'm saying here is it looked such a mess. Oh yes, this is what I'm going to show you. I used the other cup. I cut that top part right out. I just cut it out. You can see it on the left there at the upper by my watering jar. And there is my die cutter that I am using my place, you know, that mat that I bought that fits perfectly into my Gemini. So this is, uh, I can't remember the measurements, 9 by 12 or 9 by 11 or something like that. So I was cutting out all kinds of die cuts that day. Just one uh, die package at a time with white and black so that I set them aside. This is what's really nice. If you know you have an album that you're futuristically going to create and you have time, start cutting in your spare time. Just take out your dies and start cutting them in black and white or craft, you know, whatever you're using as your back piece of paper. And then you can cut another one out with your colored cardstock, you know, your 12 by 12 pack or whatever you're using. And uh, I don't know why I kept this in here. I just wanted to show you that in your spare time, if you're doing an album, I just go right ahead and cut out tons of dies. I just take them out of my stash and you can see that I use my mat that goes with the Spellbinder 2-in-1. This is a 2-in-1 mat. It keeps all the little gut pieces on the mat until you pick it up and then it just falls off. It's like it's magnetic, I'm telling you. They stay in place on the mat and then when you tip it, they just fall off. It's crazy, but they don't move otherwise. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just wonderful. That mat, I'll remember to leave the link for you. So now I'm giving it a second try because I had cut it off before. And I went back to my, yeah, just throw it over there because I was really frustrated because, yeah, I cut it there. But then I thought, well, that's cool because then now I'm going to use my scissors. I already have the cut in it. So I'm able to lift it up and cut it up with my scissors. And then I'll just glue it together. And I love the idea of having the other piece to put on top so I get the texture. I get the lift on it. So while I deal with that little cut, I will set that aside. I end up cutting the upper third off my tea bag. I ran and grabbed some of my Michael glitter. You know the one where you get six glitters in one tub right there? And I put some gold and bronze inside the bag. And then I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to fold this to look like a normal tea bag? You know? Um, and because the tea bag was not, it was just not see through enough for me, I set it aside. I did glue it together and I did move on. And I have to tell you, I'm so glad to be back using my art glitter glue. Sorry about that, an email's coming there. You can see I glued down my first endeavor and now I am going to work with this um, tea bag. And this was the oddest shape, isn't that funny? Looks like a bell. It's cute. If you put a string and a tag on it, you get away with having it as a tea bag, but it wasn't clear for me. So I went to get something else out of my stash and I found these little baggies. You get, I think, 20 of them at my dollar store. Uh, uh, they're like, um, they're like bridal material, you know, that real fine, they're little bags and they have a pull of uh, gold satin uh, ribbon at the top and you get about 20 of them for $1.50 or something like that. And I found that and it worked perfect. So here you go. Here's when I changed up that I'm going to do this as a wedding album page. Because what's not sweeter than having a tea with your mom on your wedding day if your mom is still with you and or with a loved one. Have a cup of tea at the end of the day 
or at the beginning of your bride, bridal day, of your marriage day. I'm trying to think of a word. Of your wedding day. There it is. So I cut two of these down, and I'm still thinking a card. I'm still thinking a card, but boy, that's a honking big card. Then I took out this trifold album. I mean, $13.99 US. So that if you live in the States, that's a really good deal to have a, a seven and a half by nine and a half inch. The pages, I think, are seven by nine. And I thought, yes, I'm using this as a back page, but it's going to flip. We're going to do a flip with some pullouts and all kinds of goodies on this page. But this is just going to be when you get to the end, you're going to have to, you're going to have a cup of tea, of course, of course, of course. So then I just left the idea of having a card and I went with this, but the tea bag had to go. And when you see that little packet sachet thing, you'll know why it looks like a perfect tea bag. And then I went to my stash and I got some of those flakes, you know, those mica flakes? And they were tea stained mica flakes. Can you believe that? Now here's the paper I got at Michael's, the white satin. Uh, 12 by 12 papers for the album and then I saw these gold papers for six ninety six bucks they were six dollars for 50 of those sheets you can't beat that to have an edge on the black paper so I cut it out and then you know me I have to save on my cardstock and I cut the guts out of the middle and just kept the edge for my page see this is how easy it is you don't need a die. Just cut it down, get your scissors, whack it out of there, and there you have a beautiful edge to your black sheet of paper. And I found a channel. I have to share this with you. Her name is Scrap Queen. She's from Holland. Oh, yeah. And I found this Stampin' Up! Um, oh, it's almost like my bone folder uh, material. It's so flat. I got it five years ago with Stampin' Up! when I bought, uh, you know when you first got the box of supplies, then you had um, a cutout you could put on your wall and that came with it to scrape it off the page. I didn't use it but I sure am glad I found it because it's so nice and thin that it works well to rip your um, you know, your double-sided tape off or whatever you need to have a nice thin edge. Almost, oh, paper thin. It's wonderful. Now, here's another paper that I'm taking out stash papers, what I'm doing to match that paper pack wedding uh, album that I got. And I literally went around my stash to see and I found papers that I absolutely love that are going to make this album just stand out wonderfully because it's going to be in the pink, gray, and white and black. So that's wonderful. Look at all these goody papers. Yeah, I was happy. So that now I have to have a mindset that this is going to be the back page, the flip page to an album. So I'm going to make some flowers out of that die. I'm going to cut out these from Heartfelt Creations. I get some little baggies out of there. I'm going to make some, is it glycine bags? out of that die you're looking at right there. You know, we have so much in our stash. And here's another stash piece. <laughs> I'm trying to get some wooden things there. Sorry, I'm playing around on my computer. But I thought, okay, I'm going to grab this and just see what I could use for this. These are cameos. Uh, yeah, and that is some wonderful chandeliers. Uh, chandelier. I don't know if it's like deer in the plural. Chandelier on it. And Tim Holtz. That's that wonderful um, it's not wood but uh, it'll come to me. I'll leave the links. Blue fern. I just love blue fern. And then these are going to be flip tab tabs I think. I'm going to put the paper over top of that. I was having so much fun just, you think I had 44 pages to this album with the supplies I took out, I'm telling you. It, you just go overboard because it's so much fun to go shopping in your stash and find some of the things you have that would be incorporated lovely 
into a wedding album. Here's my 65 pound black card stock I got at Michael's. You want to use this on your pages. The 110 pound is way too thick. So the 65 is just perfect for a background. I'm doing it uh, with the black and then the white, then the colors. Then I found these two uh, albums that I had in my stash. About four years ago, they went on sale. These 12 by 12 albums went on sale from $24.99 to $4.99. So I bought, I think I bought 20 of these albums. They were uh, baby albums, wedding albums, uh, springtime albums, uh, all kinds of neat stuff in here that I took out for my one little album. And that's why, and I gave some away. You know, I think I bought 20 albums and then there were five baby albums, five wedding albums, five uh, another time and five of another season albums. And I just put them away because I knew there would be a day when I wanted some. I kept those papers out too. Isn't that a gorgeous album? I will find the Mambo, Mambo kit is it called? Yes, so I went to my stash and I grabbed two of them, two of the five, and took out, because the colors were right, you know, the cream, the black, and the white. And off to the right-hand side by my um, keyboard there, you can see all of the stash beautiful stuff. Stash stuff. I love stash stuff. Yes, shopping in your own stash is wonderful. So here I go. Oh, yes, look at that. Then I threw that out. I'm just having a look-see to see if this will work. And of course, even if you get to use one thing out of this, it's fabulous. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm so sorry. But I forgot to put down the camera, my camcorder down, you know, so I wasn't so far away from you. Look how far away I am. So you can see all the junk all over my island. <laughs> yeah. And so here we go. I'm so happy to join you. You know, this is not going on this album. I just started playing around with some Martha Stewart punches. Love this Garden Gate punch. And now I'm zooming in, right? So I made a, t um, a page that flipped, like a little flip page. And it's going to go on one of the pages, but not this one. I just thought, I feel like seeing what some of my, dusting off some of my punches and see what they do. That's awesome. You know me, I like to jump from this to that. And on the breaks that I have, you know, my little uh, tea or Coca-Cola, whatever, cookie break, I have been watching, like I said, Diane from Scrap Queen. And she's so enjoyable and I've learned so much. Thank you, Diane. You're very very talented. So I will leave some links. Now there's the the fragments, the tea stained fragments of the mica and I put them inside this, it's like a veil material, nylon. It's like a nylon little baggie and you close the top with a drawstring made out of gold ribbon and I think I got 20 of those in a bag. Now here's my tea. Let's get on with it. My thick page protector acetate then I got out my alcohol inks and I put down all the colors, even a green in there. I don't know what that was for. Kind of, you didn't see it, but I thought, whoa, that's kind of like moldy looking. But I just went ahead and sprinkled it with a lot of browns. And then when I got the undertone of this green that I didn't like, I thought, boy, that can't be tea leaves, can it? I added more brown. And then I added some Adirondack. Um, you know, the toner there. I put that in there. Now look at, is this not looking like tea? Oh, then I cut it out behind my teacup. There's the Adirondack um, liquid that spreads it out. All I can think of the word is toner, but whatever it is, I'll have it on my blog. Then I just took my pouncer thingy pounced it out and I found a spot on my, once it dries, it's almost dries immediate, it's alcohol ink. And I play around with this, then I cut it out right at the right spot behind the teacup. Oh, I'm telling you, when you know me, when I get, 
when something goes right, I want to tell everybody about it. I mean, just overly excited that this looked like tea. The alcohol ink on acetate is the thing to do. It's like working, Charlene, with your stained glass background. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. I love the bloom when you put that Adirondack toner stuff on there. I just put it at the perfect spot. I taped it on with scotch tape on the back of my cup. I glued that little piece off and look at that. I have my doily on there. I love the spellbinder die I used uh, as on the corners of this die. I used two of them. This way I was able to tilt my teacup pot, excuse me. Um, it's just, it's not in there securely. I'm going to do that at the end. And I tell you what, I was so excited to use this. It just fit perfectly for a page uh, on here. I put my saucer down on the doily. Then I'm going to raise up my teacup because you want to see. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden I thought, no, 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 no. You want to raise that up, Carol. You don't want that flat. So I grabbed my honk and roll of scotch tape, cut some tape off. I'm pretty sure I used the scotch roll and raise that up so you could see the tea. Oh, I'm telling you, I love this. And I used some black. Oh, no, I didn't use my scotch roll. I went into my stash and I grabbed these um, black dimensionals that I had, all different sizes. And I'll make sure I leave the link to those because sometimes it just works out well to use black behind there instead of white. But you can use anything. And it doesn't have the great big lift as did the scotch roll. You know, it just raised it up a little bit. Just enough to make me satisfied. I think this is the sticky stuff um, adhesive. I'm going to have the link to it because they're really sticky and they're super nice to work with. They have this black, like I say, in all kinds of shapes and sizes. So here's our cup of tea. Look at here. And doesn't that vellum you, you can use, I don't know what I was doing there, thinking of putting bling on it. I don't know. But I'm going to put it down on my doily, lift it up just a tad. I love the idea of using alcohol inks to have the look of anything liquid or your stained glass effect. Looks really nice. Now I need to have a little cotton string. So I went to one of my little uh, storage bins to grab um, a white piece of it so I can put it on my tea bag. Look at these, oh, those scissors didn't even cut. I ended up getting rid of those scissors actually. I thought I'm not keeping scissors that don't cut immediately. That's crazy. There must have been a cheaper scissor that I bought one day when I was out and about, you know, a thrift store. Now I'm looking for a locket, something to lock my album already. Look at the one on the right. I think that's, um, I don't know, Yes, I was just going crazy. Now here's the pin thing. If it sticks to the magnet, it's not stainless steel. And my friend Tina told me this, and she was right, because if you put a pin down in your glue and it's not stainless steel, your glue is going to turn black. Yes, and you will lose your glue because it will not look nice coming out. So I went through my stick pin, my needles, to see if that's really so. And sure enough, Tina, you were right. Not that she wasn't right. I just wanted to check it for myself. So if the pin or the needle, that aren't these lovely? This says these little latches, they're made in Britain, in England, and they say subject to the queen on them. They're right here. And I'm going to use some snaps. I have them right with me. By appointment to the Queen Mother, hook and eye makers. Isn't that lovely? I got these at a thrift store. And now I'm looking for a spoon. Now, is that not hysterical? The spoon is bigger than my teapot. Forget about my teacup. <laughs> and I was going to put it, yes. And then I took apart this lovely uh, bracelet 
and it has the reds in it. I'm going to use it later on in my album because it's the perfect uh, shades of red in the roses. And this is going to be my sentiment. I die cut that out of a Spellbinder die. And then I'm taking all the metal off because metal just doesn't go. Even if you put gesso on it and paint it, it, it just didn't go. There's the all to new set. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love, love, love it. Now I'm getting serious. See that little one in the middle, that little die? That's what's going to make the tab on my tea bag. I had to search and search because you need something small, either a punch, but I couldn't find a small enough punch in that shape. But I did find that die. And I spent, I don't know, how many hours just going through stash stuff and saying, yep, yeah, I'm going to use this. This is a leftover from some dies. And I'm getting serious now. I took some lace. This is going to be a lace paper album. Halfy, halfy. I put just a little bit on here because I'm going to have a waterfall on the back of this when you flip it up on the back of my album. But I did want to have the page done, so I am using the smaller. It is stretchy, stretchy, and it has a beautiful, um, it's beautifully pushed together, whatever you call that. It is um, just a beautiful piece of lace. So I decided to put that on, and it's got the boing boing stretchy on it. So that's nice. The folds in it, the folds in it are very nice. And there you have that little, just that adding that little bit of detail around there would look nice as the album back page or as a card. Even this big would be lovely. If you put on the back of this where an easel, where it stands up, I think you could mail that out and it would be wonderful. So now I want just hot glue down the center so I can put a tag on each side of my teapot. So you'll be able to, at the handle, put a tag in there, and you'll be able to put a tag underneath the spout. So we're talking, right there, we're talking album here. I am set in my ways. That's it, look at that. And uh, you won't don't want to go out that far in the left because it'll hit your page, but anyway. Sue, so I'm trying to find a place to put everything. Look at these stickers. So I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be an album, so let's go through some of my stash. There's the little flap I made for futuristic pages. And see that little wee die cut? I did it in white and black, and that's going to be on the end of our tea bag. So here I'm just looking at some of the stash stuff that's in my, um, you know, in my craft room. I love the Tim Holtz, the, oh, what do you call these things? I remember, grunge board. <laughs> I had to go look, yeah. So, anywho, I just stopped the video and went and looked, and it's grunge board. It's wonderful stuff because it's very pliable, and here's some vellum with some beautiful velvet filigree on it. I'm going to use that in the album. But first I need to do the edges around my little tea bag. And it's so cute because when you go and you look in your stash, it's amazing to see the things you're not sure you have but you need for a project. So I'm going to just show you uh, in this little, it's called, uh, let's see, this stamp set is um, Oh, it'll come to me. Here's this something. I can't remember anything. I'm going to blame it on my high blood pressure. <laughs> but flourishes. This is a flourishes set. And look at that beautiful teapot. It has two of them. And in this set, it has Let's Have Tea. I, I'm sure it's from that set and not the Alta New Tea set. But that is one beautiful stamp set that I got oh, five years ago at least from Flourishes. And uh, yeah, and just beautiful teacups and tea bag stamps and teapots, vintage looking, so beautiful. But I did need that larger size. So when you need something like that, you can always trace over something if your cardstock is thin enough, you know, that you can um, see through it. And there's 
you know, there's just so many ways to get things that <laughs> you need for projects out of your stash, right? So I needed to find where I was going to find it. I think I put it up there. If I'm right, we shall see in it when the page is completed. And I thought that this would be beautiful if you could flip it up in the album. And there's so many wonderful album makers. I have been, you know, when I wasn't well, oh, I put it down there. Fancy that. There it is because it's right across from the actual tea. Doesn't that bell, um, acetate with the alcohol inks look like real tea in there? Oh, I love it. Yes, I love everything about this project and going and about to start a wedding album. And I want to thank like some people that I watch their album tutorials. My friend Tina Schaefer and hers, she sells her albums on her Etsy. It's Cards to Die For. If you're looking it up, I'll leave a link. Here, I'm doing the pearl thing. Oh, yes, this is going to have femininity plus in this wedding album. I don't, I haven't decided whether it's going to be a Mother of the Bride album or an actual bridal album for the bride. We shall see in the upcoming tutorials. And there's the little stamp. And it had three little tea leaves that perfectly matched the tea leaves I put across the lid of the teapot and I just I don't know I was just putting leaves on there and they happen to look like these tea leaves in the flourishes stamp set isn't that amazing and I cut around the white cardstock or the black I'm not sure if I made the black bigger or the white smaller when I was cutting something like that and then I'm zooming in to show you how utterly sweet this little sentiment is let's have tea of course and the saucer is Copics the rest of it is with two different sets of watercolor paints one is the Altenew and one is the Prima so here we go it doesn't matter as long as you whatever you have in your stash to color with just go for it now there is the little cotton string I took the tiny attacher by Tim Holtz and stapled it on there you know like they do when you buy those fancy dancy tees and then that just the black and white matched perfectly on this little die cut that I had in my stash the die cut set and I filled it with the micro uh, chips you know the tea stained ones that I showed you I think I I did show you that and you have a tea bag with the tea leaves on the little, you know. I was going to put a little sentiment in there, but I thought with Let's Have Tea, that was enough. And to have three little tea leaves was perfect. I love this. Yes. I just had so much fun. But I'm looking at it thinking, okay, I see some dots on there. So I have got to get out my larger pearls. And we have to put some nice feminine pearls down. It's only fitting, right? Yes. So I'm loving this project. I really am. I'm so glad I went to an album page. It helps me to use more stash. I got these that Michael's using one of my coupons. And that's what you do. You just wait for coupon day. You take a few friends with you. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I used to take my mom when uh, before she went to heaven with me and uh, we would use the she would get one thing I wanted and I would get the other but now our Michaels they let me buy two things with the coupons I can get use two coupons they are so good to me I really love shopping there so here we go I'm in love with my art glitter glue I have to tell you that this stuff sticks down like crazy and you can get it uh, the art glitter glue I got at Heartfelt Creations. You saw that in my little haul. Now I'm putting on the larger of the pearls. I want to give a shout out to my friend Shelly Geigel for her wonderful work creating albums on YouTube. And also I'm going to add lace to this. And my friend Margaret, I'll put her link. She's 7 Mrs. T on YouTube. Hi Margaret. If you want to see beautiful lace albums, she just put another one out. She does many, many lace projects. 
So here I'm just, oh yes, I made sure I put the art glitter glue. Make sure you put glue down and don't trust the glue on the back of your pearl sets, you know. It doesn't stick in the long haul. So the art glitter glue with the fine tip works perfectly. So Margaret, I will put your link. She's a beautiful creator of lace albums. And Sandy uh, Trefker. Sandy, I just found her site looking up albums. She does beautiful albums. I appreciate you getting back to me when I left a comment there, uh, Sandy. Your work is wonderful. So it's I'll leave her link as well for you to check out. I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. For Scrap Queen, I just found her. From, she's over um, in... Um, where is she now? Uh, oh, I don't know what's happening to me. Let's look. do the close-up. Look at that tea. Yes. Holland. <laughs> I have to say it right away, even if it's in the middle of a sentence. You know me. If it comes back to me, say it right away because it'll be gone again. So here's my art glitter glue. I put a pair of scissors on the end. And this is not a, a pin. Watch this. See how this is stainless steel? It does not stick to my um, magnets there. And these, these are the cheap ones. And see how they stick? They look nice and they look like they would be stainless steel, but they're not. You don't want to stick that in the tip of your glue. It will turn your glue black. Trust me, it happened. I've done that on many occasions with glue that I put a pin or a needle down in to make sure the air doesn't get in. So I'm just giving you that heads up. My friend Tina helped me with that. Thank you, Tina. And um, yeah, I'm just loving this stuff. I love the tip on this. It is marvelous, marvelous. Well, my friends, this tutorial should have went up a few days ago. I have been having some difficulty downloading, so I'm going to cut it off here. The pictures, you will see the tag that I made. I used rub-ons to uh, make the beautiful font that's on the back and the front of the tags. So you have yourself a blessed week. You know I appreciate your comments, and I'll see you shortly on the next page of this bridal album. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the pictures.